This is a Casey Tech School video on using Tinkercad to make a basic virtual Arduino circuit. We're going to look at how to build a basic Arduino circuit and connect up an LED and a resistor and then use the code editor to code the LED's behavior to blink it on and off. Well, what do we mean by virtual Arduino? Well, if we look at a real Arduino board, we can see the Arduino board called the Uno and a breadboard containing a small circuit. And the Arduino has been programmed to blink the LED in the video on and off, as shown. We can recreate this virtually, though, by using Tinkercad. And on the right, you can see the same Arduino Uno board, and you can see a simulation function that has turned the LED on and off in a blinking mode. And you'll also see that there's a code section that's allowed us to write the code to achieve that. Well, what is the Arduino anyway? Arduino is an easy to use open source microcontroller development board. And a microcontroller is a small computer chip with onboard memory. The Arduino Uno has input and output pins and it allows us to connect up things such as electronic sensors and output components such as LEDs, buzzers, LCDs, etc. We can then use the Arduino IDE to write code and upload the code to control behavior. And it can be powered by the USB coming from our PC or by small battery packs afterwards. Okay, to make a virtual Arduino circuit, you'll first need to open Tinkercad.com and sign up for an account if you haven't got one already. If you need an account, maybe check out this video first. We're now going to go to the circuits part of Tinkercad and create a new circuit. And that opens up the workspace as you can see it. Probably best here though, we are given a random name so we're going to change that to Arduino Blink LED, just to indicate how we're going to use this. On our right, you can see our library of components, and we're going to scroll down and find an Arduino Uno, and drag that in. Now we could use a breadboard, as you can see in the libraries, and I'll drag that in just to show you, to connect up an LED and resistor, which is what we want to do. Um, but in this case, we don't really need the breadboard. We'd probably need the red breadboard in real life, but we don't really need it in that virtual sense. So if we just go over to the rubbish bin or hit delete on your keyboard, we can get rid of that. If we scroll back up in our library, we can see the first two basic components of a resistor and an LED. If we use this toggle button on the right, it gives a description of what the components are so we can understand how they work. In this case, a resistor restricts current flow. We need that to restrict current flow to the LED because they're a little bit sensitive. Anyway, so we'll toggle back to the basic name description. We'll bring in a resistor. Uh, in this case, it's given it a default value of one kilo ohm or 1,000 ohms. We're going to change that to be 330 ohms, which is a fairly standard sized resistor, which is very good for protecting LEDs when connected to Arduino. Click that and you can see the colored bands which denote the value of change. Now we're going to bring a LED in, left click, drag that across. If I hover over, you can see an anode, which is the positive side, and the other side is the cathode, the negative side. So the more positive side, we want to connect towards the more positive side of the circuit and the negative side to the more negative side. So we're going to orient this by clicking it using the rotate key like so to get it to this configuration i'll just drag it up slightly now i want to connect the two up using a wire if i hover over the resistor you can see it'll just highlight in red left click that drag across till it highlights the anode of the led and then release and we have a wire there the default is green i can change that to a variety of colors which green is good in this case all right, now I'm going to connect the negative side, the cathode, to the negative side of our circuit, which is called GND on our Arduino. If I make a wire over here, click that. If I double click on spaces, I can make these bend points like so. In this case, usually negative sides of the circuit are denoted by the color, the wire color black. So I'll make it black just to keep it fairly standard. 
All right, now we're going to connect the positive side from one of these pins. Now you can see there's digital pins here, and we're just going to choose one randomly. I'm going to use digital pin 7 or D7. If I hover over that, it'll show D7. Click that, drag it across. Uh, I'll leave it green in this case, make a few bend points to make this circuit look a little bit cleaner and realistic. All right, and now we're ready to go. What we want to do is code this so that we turn on pin D7 to light the LED up, leave it on for a certain time, then turn pin 7 off, D7 off, to turn the LED off, and then continually loop through that cycle to blink it on and off, in this case in one second intervals. So up here we have a code button. If I click that, it brings out the default, which is block code. Block code is great if you don't understand text-based code yet. It's easy to understand. The other options are blocks and text, which we can use both. We can use blocks, and then it gives us the equivalent in text based in a text-based language. In our case, though, so probably text-based would be the best. Now we've opened up the, the code editor in the text mode, as I've just shown you. And it's put some default code in for blinking an LED on and off. In this case, we're going to look at the two functions. The first function is this one I'll highlight called void setup. It only runs once when we download code and power up. And its job is to set the pins up for how we want to use them. In this case, we want to use pin D7. Here they've got pin 13. So we're going to change that to a 7. And this command here, or this function, or this what we call a method within the setup function, is saying the pin mode, we want to use pin 7, D7 as an output. This is because we want to connect to an output LED. We could connect a sensor to that and use that as an input, but that's a subject of a further video. Here now, the code moves into the loop. And this loop will continue to run over and over forever until we either power down or change the code and upload the code again to the microcontroller here. Now if we look at this, digital right, we're going to change that to pin 7 to denote pin D7 over here. And high means we're literally going to turn this pin on. The next bit of code, delay 1000, means leave it on for 1000 milliseconds or one second. Now the code in brown here is not really code at all. It's these two backslashes. It denotes a comment for the coders or someone reading the code to understand. The compiler that uses that code to execute doesn't take that comment. If we were to take those slashes out of the way, it would become real code and we'd probably get an error. We'll put those back. Digital right 7 high turns pin D7 on, which will turn the LED on. Digital right change the next code to 7. 7 low does the opposite and will turn that pin D7 off. Okay, and the delay 1000 of course just leaves it off for 1000 milliseconds or one second. Let's now start the simulation and see what happens. And as we can see, the LED here starts to blink on and off in one second intervals. We could change this, we'll just stop the simulation, go back to our code, change the intervals of the delay method to be 500. And good programming practice would mean we'd probably change the comment to, to, to match. It means we're now going to blink it on. We'll go back to start, blink the LED on in much quicker half second or 500 millisecond intervals, as you can see. Well, the aim of this video was to use Tinkercad to build a virtual Arduino circuit. To then use the Tinkercode code editor to code the Arduino to blink an LED on and off. And then to look at that code and see what it means.